types of interaction, I think, this is a, again a brought with great generalisation, two types of interaction between religion and politics. One I, one I would call the old religion, the old religion and politics. And the concerns of the old religion and politics were firmly aspirational. That is, it was about education, it was about health, it was about welfare, and it was about government support for the efforts of the, of the churches in those, in those areas. Uh, and I think the churches and religious groups have been largely successful in the old politics. Um, over the years, in education and health and in welfare and aged care and in other areas, I think you would have to say that as part of the general development of the, of the welfare state, the churches have got their share, if you like, in looking after their own community and looking after the wider, the wider community. I'm not, sorry to put it in such blunt, blunt terms. I think in more recent times, the new the politics of religion has been about the role of evangelicals in Australian politics, broadly speaking, the role of Assemblies of God, the role of Pentecostal churches, the role of, uh, if you like, a new type of, of religion, often described as a very individualistic type of religion, who may have some interest in those older issues, but are talking in the language of so-called family values, the social conservatism, which is often called the religious right, um, and I think over the last six to ten years in Australia, there's been a great media frenzy about that sort of involvement between religion and politics, even to the extent of uh, um, you know, the Brethren and the Opus Dei and a whole range of other groups. My point would be that the central concerns of the institutional churches are still the bread and butter of interaction between religion and politics both in financial terms, I think, and in terms of the possible impact on policy, um, partly because the churches are the ones who are delivering those services, and that gives a great deal of leverage in uh, getting involved in the political argument about the direction of those, of those services. The rise of the religious rights, so-called, I think, was exaggerated in the media, um, but it certainly scared Labor, for one, into action after 2004. And there's a very interesting story Kevin Rudd's um, uh, project, I, I would call it, uh, Kevin Rudd's project to reposition the Labor Party as a party which would attract its share of religious believers. Labor really believed after 2004, in the middle of talk about Hillsong and, and uh, Family First suddenly coming onto the horizon, Steve Fielding getting elected in Victoria and um, a number of other electorates um, where uh, evangelical Christians and the role of the Lions Forum, which was a conservative faction within the, that's L-Y-O-N-S, uh, Enid Lyons um, and Joe Lyons, the Lions Forum within the Liberal Party. I think the Labor Party really felt that they were slipping behind, that they were losing the, the, the old staple of the Catholics and it wasn't being replaced by anyone else from from the churches, and that all of the churches, um, the Evangelical Anglicans and other churches were moving in to support the, the coalition. I think that was all a bit of a, exaggerated, but it certainly shaped Australian politics over the last six years as far as religion and politics is concerned. About that time, a body called the Australian Christian Lobby was set up in Canberra claiming to speak for all Christians. Now, it doesn't speak for all Christians, it's a largely evangelical-based um, organisation, but it's, it's innovative and it's creative and it's got a lot of money because people in the Baptist churches, the evangelical churches and others are maintaining a large secretariat in Canberra. And one of the things that the established churches, the Catholics, the Anglicans, the Uniting Church, have to work out is how are we going to deal with these new kids on the block as far as religion and politics is concerned. We don't want to lose our own identity because we think we have distinctive beliefs, but we need to engage with the fact that there's someone else claiming to speak for Christians and claiming quite respect, effectively to speak for, for Christians, and, and not just Hillsong and where you know, any politician worth their salt ended up speaking at Hillsong in 2004, <laughs> even Bob Carr, who was 
totally declared atheist went to Hillsong to talk about it. Uh, um, and why wouldn't you go somewhere which is 20,000 young people who uh, are enthusiastic about something and they say they want to get involved in, uh, in politics? And that's the other thing about the evangelicals. They do tend to have a very high percentage of young people. And, and young people are very important in political action. <laughs>